Hi, good morning. It's morning when I'm recording right now. Um, this is Mr. Schmidt, your librarian at Sierra 28 School, and I have a really great book to read for you today that I found when I was picking out books to read for a class, and it's called When Dinosaurs Came with Everything. And the author is uh, Ilse Broach, and it's illustrated by David Small. And it's really cute, so I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. So, it says, Friday is errand day. My mom uh, goes on boring errands, and I have to go with her. And this Friday seemed like every other Friday, until we got to the bakery. A sign above the donuts read, buy a dozen, get a dinosaur couldn't believe my eyes. Neither could my mom. They must mean a toy, she said. But when I took the box of donuts, the lady behind the counter said, hold on, little guy. Don't forget your dinosaur. And there he was. Mom, I yelled. It was a triceratops. What? cried my mom. She did not look happy. How are we supposed to get that home? The bakery lady smiled. Oh, don't worry, he'll follow you. They always do. And he did, all the way to the doctor's office where I had to go for my checkup. My mom shook her head. What are we gonna do with him now? She looked him up and down. That took a while. We can't bring him inside, she said finally. He'll have to stay in the parking lot. And I told him not to talk to strangers. After my checkup, I asked for a sticker, like usual. No stickers today, said the nurse, just dinosaurs. With a shot, you get two. I want a shot, I said. The nurse smiled, not today, buddy, but you can pick your dinosaur up at the front desk. Mom, I yelled. There at the front desk was a stegosaurus. What on earth is going on? My mom cried. It's a special day, the nurse explained. Today, dinosaurs come with everything. Yes, I said. No, my mom groaned. Oh, he's eating a leaf. We walked through the street and my triceratops and my stegosaurus walked right behind us. Thud, thud, thud. They made friends right away. Across the street, other kids had dinosaurs too. I saw an ankylosaur, a duckbill, a velociraptor. We all waved at each other and our mothers glared and kept on walking. I think we'd better go home right now, my mom said. But what about my haircut? The barber's waiting for me. My mom looked at the dinosaurs and then she looked at my bangs. The barber always gives you a balloon, doesn't he? A nice balloon? Uh-huh, I said. I didn't want a balloon. I wanted a dinosaur. The barber shop, I gave my triceratops and my stegosaurus a donut for a snack, and they waited outside and watched through the glass. The barber pumped the chair up high, and he cut my hair too short, but I didn't mind, because then he patted my head and said, Wait right here, sport. He was gone a long time. My mom tapped her foot. I don't like this, she said. Where exactly do they keep the balloons? Just then, the barber came back with something flying over his head. It wasn't a balloon. Mom, I yelled, it was a pterosaur. This is too much, my mom protested. Oh, the poor mommy. Now listen, she said to the barber, I think a balloon will do just fine today. Don't you have any balloons? Sorry, lady, no balloons. You get one of these instead. It was like that everywhere we went. At the shoe store, the sign read, buy two pair, get a dinosaur free. My mom decided my shoes would last a little while longer. At the theater, we could hear the popcorn man shouting, butter, no butter, you want a dinosaur with that? My mom said we'd go to the movies 
another day. At the diner, I wanted to stop for a hamburger, but then a girl walked out with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, that's it, my mom cried. We are definitely not having lunch there. She looked at my Triceratops, my Stegosaurus, and my Pterosaur. What are we supposed to do with all these dinosaurs? We don't have room for them. We can't take care of them. I hugged her leg. Don't worry, Mom. They can live in the backyard. My mom shook her head. Sweetheart, they're not toys. Dinosaurs are a lot of work. I'll do everything, I promise. Please, Mom, please. My mom sighed. Well, I suppose we can't just leave them here. Thank heavens we didn't stop at the diner. We hurried home and my dinosaurs hurried after us. Thud, thud, thud. Flap, flap, flap. When we were almost there, we saw a little duck bill dinosaur standing alone on the street corner. He looked lost. Mom, that's a baby hadrosaur. He's all by himself. Sweetie, we've already got our hands full. The hadrosaur followed us. It wasn't my fault. Mm, look at that little donut though, huh? When we got home, my mom needed to lie down. So I made lunch for the dinosaurs. Then I showed them where to go to the bathroom. And I told them to stay out of the neighbor's yard because of his mean dog. The dog looks big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does look big for a dog. And I showed them my slide, my tire swing, and all of the toys in the garage. They seemed to be having fun, but they really went wild when I took out my Frisbee. The hadrosaur had the first row. The Frisbee landed on the roof. I saw my mom watching from the window. Is everything all right out there, she asked. Everything's fine, Mom. We can get it down. And my pterosaur flew up and plucked the Frisbee off the, out of the gutter. My mom kept watching, and she looked at him for a long time. The next thing I knew, she had him cleaning the gutters. Then she came out of the backyard with a pile of wet clothes. These spikes come in handy, don't they, she said. Here's some laundry. Pretty soon, my mom had thought of chores for all my dinosaurs. But I knew they didn't mind. It just meant that they were part of the family. When we were finished helping, my mom said I could invite some friends over. It was a bring your own dinosaur party. And guess what happened next? I heard my mom on the phone to the bakery. She asked, do you have any donuts left? And that's when I knew everything would be just fine. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book. Bye for now.